I'll take a look at some of the news out on the day. And uh, firstly, starting off with how the market performed, looking at that NSE 20 blue chip index up by six tenths of the cent. 4,860 points is where it ends off the week, uh, ends off this Thursday's trade. Of course, it is a public holiday in South Africa tomorrow. So, of course, uh, ending of the week here in South Africa one, from a trading perspective, but certainly not in Kenya, looking at the currency and how it's faring 85.6 against the greenback flat as it stands. Well, uh, joining us from our Nairobi studios to get an update on what's taking place in the market, Catherine Carita, General Manager at NIC Securities. Catherine, uh, thanks so much for joining us today. So before we get into to market activity, let's just take a look at, uh, of course, the results of the election and the petition to the election result by Raila Odinga. Uh, what are Kenyans sensing right now as to what might take place, what type of, I suppose, from an investment perspective would you see when it comes to positioning? Uh, is, it, is it a big deal uh, right now, given the fact that, of course, we have seen such a smooth election process to date? Uh, yes, I mean, it is a big deal, and everybody's been watching uh, the, the rulings of the Supreme Court uh, sessions. Uh, we are not making any um, any judgment until we, we hear from the verdict on Saturday with what the judges will say regarding this. But it, it has been keen on everybody's radar this week, and we're glad it will be coming to an end on Saturday, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, but that has not uh, really slowed down our market this week. Uh, as you've mentioned, the index did move up slightly, and it has been actually gaining slightly uh, each trading session this week. Mm -hmm. So for, for a short week, uh, we did see it um, do, do well. Yeah. And as you said, it is a short week as well in Kenya. So when it comes to uh, positioning in the market, of course, we've seen a lot of results come through. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, got those hard and fast numbers to be able to make investment decisions going forward now. Uh, what's your positioning in the market? Any specific sectors that you see as uh, undervalued at this point? I don't think anything is undervalued at this point. Uh, a lot of things are trading way above uh, you know the valuations that we've had out. The banking sector continues to to show a lot of momentum in terms of trade at volumes, in terms of price. Uh, just today we saw KCB rally up again to uh, touched uh, 41. We've seen uh, equity do a high of 35 today actually, but uh, close on an average of 33 and a quarter. So I think the market has been quite resilient. Uh, uh, foreigners have been participating in the market as well, uh, accounting for about 45 to 50 percent of the trades we've seen this week. So as much as we're keeping an eye on the political scene, uh, the markets are reacting quite positively. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about the bank sector, and of course it has been a theme where banking stocks have certainly been in vogue uh, since the end of, of December. But one of the bank stocks that's undervalued, CFC Standbeck, uh, I mean, it's priced to book one and a half times the banking sector trading with that price to book of two times. Uh, do you see opportunities for, for value in this specific uh, bank stock right now or uh, any reason why it's uh, trading at a discount relative to its peers? Well, um, we did see CFC Steinbeck stock uh, rally up to 68 shillings right after the results uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think the momentum lost was as a result of uh, the new petitions and everybody having a wait and see approach. It has gained uh, marginally this week uh, because it was coming off a base of 55 and now we saw it uh, go to about 60 today. Um, I do think uh, there is room for uh, more upside on the stock, uh, but also liquidity remains um, an aspect here because a lot of it is owned by Standard Bank, 60% uh, of it, and, and that liquidity um, mm -hmm. creates that, um, I think, price hold back. Mm -hmm. Now, saying in the banking sector, it seems that Family Bank, which we know has intention to list on the stock exchange, is planning another uh, rights issue. It's net profits recently posting a rise of almost 60%. So the bank's doing really well and of course looking to, to raise further capital. Do you think that uh, given the fact that it's looking to, to boost its balance sheet, it could compete more effectively with other banks in, in Kenya and could in fact increase market share on the back of this? Absolutely. Uh, let's not forget uh, Family Bank had just come into the market last December for another cash call where they took in about $1.2 billion for the expansion. Uh, the, the, the new information of a new uh, rights issue possibly uh, next year is also for expansion on the retail and corporate lending book. And um, they have been on uh, OTC for quite some time and it could be also an opportunity for them to prepare for a listing by introduction, uh, trying to get into that market share while they still can. 
Now, just moving into to the brewery space, it seems that a former evil boss who, in fact, came to work for Brand House here in South Africa, Gerald Mahinda, is now moving to Diageo's Africa as Spirits Transformation Unit. And, of course, this has been a fast-growing region for evil, given the fact that evil is now, we know, owned by Diageo. Could this be good news uh, overall for, for evil's growth plans in the spirit space? Yes, uh, that would definitely be good news, uh, I would think so. Let's not forget, uh, Gerald Mahinda was uh, the former boss uh, of uh, EABL as well. So uh, this news could um, be definitely good for, the, for EABL in Kenya and for the region as well. Yeah, but how big a part of, of their overall earnings is it at this point in time? Do you see it as a key dr driver of growth going forward? It's hard to tell at this point. Uh, I haven't looked at the, at the numbers, but I think it could definitely be an area where they'll be looking to explore. Mm -hmm. So throw forward to, to next week when everyone's had a good Easter break and, of course, we start a new month. So what are your expectations from the market? Any specific stocks we should be looking out for? I think uh, we continue to look at the banking stocks. I think Safaricom is one to look at as well as Centum. Uh, Centum has been moving up uh, this week. Uh, it's trading below its NAV at the moment, uh, but we saw it touch 2025. Their full year also ends this month. So I think a lot of people have been looking at that stock, have been seeing how undervalued it is and trying to uh, get in position. Uh, they also have um, you know, huge plans on their real estate and they should be breaking ground mid this year. So I think that's a good stock to be looking at. Safaricom uh, full year as well closes in, in March and we should be looking for good numbers come, come May.